when is the last time you received mail or a package? The National Postal Address System that is approved and gazetted by the Government of Uganda shall be used as the standard postal reference system for all last mile mail delivery nationally. Download the Postman app onto your phone free of charge on Google Play or App Store. Verify your phone number with an input code sent through SMS. Enter your personal or business information correctly to get a five-digit numerical national post code based on your location. Generate an address code that is a four-character alphanumeric code that identifies your specific address and you are ready to send and receive packages. Postman, your reliable last-mile friend. When is the last time you received mail or a package? The National Postal Address System that is approved and gazetted by the Government of Uganda shall be used as the standard postal reference system for all last mile mail delivery nationally. Download the Postman app onto your phone free of charge on Google Play or App Store. Verify your phone number with an input code sent through SMS. Enter your personal or business information correctly to get a five-digit numerical national post code based on your location. Generate an address code that is a four-character alphanumeric code that identifies your specific address and you are ready to send and receive packages. Postman, your reliable last-mile friend. When is the last time you received mail or a package? The National Postal Address System that is approved and gazetted by the Government of Uganda shall be used as the standard postal reference system for all last mile mail delivery nationally. Download the Postman app onto your phone free of charge on Google Play or App Store. Verify your phone number with an input code sent through SMS. Enter your personal or business information correctly to get a five-digit numerical national post code based on your location. Generate an address code that is a four-character alphanumeric code that identifies your specific address and you are ready to send and receive packages. Postman, your reliable last-mile friend. When is the last time you received mail or a package? The National Postal Address System that is approved and gazetted by the Government of Uganda shall be used as the standard postal reference system for all last mile mail delivery nationally. Download the Postman app onto your phone free of charge on Google Play or App Store. Verify your phone number with an input code sent through SMS. Enter your personal or business information correctly to get a five-digit numerical national post code based on your location. Generate an address code that is a four-character alphanumeric code that identifies your specific address and you are ready to send and receive packages. Postman, your reliable last-mile friend. When is the last time you received mail or a package? The National Postal Address System that is a Cosmas Mikirize, 35, is an electric engineer come by medical engineer who is a lecturer in the Department of Electric and Computer Engineering at Makere University. He possesses 11 years of teaching, research and innovation experience at Makere, MIT, Rutgers and Phillips. His work focuses on medical imaging, medical instrumentation, artificial intelligence and sustainable energy systems. From his research over the years, Cosmos has registered five patents. This is the first with the United States Patents Office. Here is the second with the World Intellectual Property Organization. Here is the third from his work at Philips, again with the World Intellectual Property Organization. This is the fourth, again with the United States Patents Office. And this is the last, which has recently been filed with uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. His major product realizations are in supporting intervention and guidance on Philips ultrasound systems, as well as a device for decontamination of medical personal protective equipment towards safe reuse. Cosmos has mentored hundreds of innovators in Uganda and throughout the world. Notably, he has served as a mentor and judge for the Big Ideas Contest since 2014, a mentor for the founders of Innovex, the first Ugandan-owned company to set up a state-of-the-art electronics manufacturing facility, 
and he was also on the front line of the science and technology innovations challenge in Uganda, supported by the presidential initiative at Makere University, which created a pool of innovators in high schools that are currently transforming the technology landscape in Uganda, and these include the founders of Innovex. Cosmas Mekirize, 35, is an electrical engineer, come by medical engineer, who is a lecturer in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Makere University. He possesses 11 years of teaching, research, and innovation experience at Makere, MIT, Rutgers, and Phillips. His work focuses on medical imaging, medical instrumentation, artificial intelligence, and sustainable energy systems. From his research over the years, Cosmos has registered five patents. This is the first with the United States Patents Office. Here is the second with the World Intellectual Property Organization. Here is the third from his work at Philips, again with the World Intellectual Property Organization. This is the fourth, again with the United States Patents Office. And this is the last, which has recently been filed with uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. His major product realizations are in supporting intervention and guidance on Philips ultrasound systems, as well as a device for decontamination of medical personal protective equipment towards safe reuse. Cosmos has mentored hundreds of innovators in Uganda and throughout the world. Notably, he has served as a mentor and judge for the Big Ideas Contest since 2014, a mentor for the founders of Innovex, the first Ugandan-owned company to set up a state-of-the-art electronics manufacturing facility, and he was also on the front line of the Science and Technology Innovations Challenge in Uganda, supported by the Presidential Initiative at Makere University, which created a pool of innovators in high schools that are currently transforming the technology landscape in Uganda, and these include the founders of Innovex. Cosmas Mekirize, 35, is an electric engineer, come by medical engineer, who is a lecturer in the Department of Electric and Computer Engineering at Makere University. He possesses 11 years of teaching, research, and innovation experience at Makere, MIT, Rutgers, and Phillips. His work focuses on medical imaging, medical instrumentation, artificial intelligence, and sustainable energy systems. From his research over the years, Cosmos has registered five patents. This is the first with the United States Patents Office. Here is the second with the World Intellectual Property Organization. Here is the third from his work at Philips, again with the World Intellectual Property Organization. This is the fourth again with the United States Patents Office. And this is the last, which has recently been filed with uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. His major product realizations are in supporting intervention and guidance on Philips ultrasound systems, as well as a device for decontamination of medical personal protective equipment towards safe reuse. Cosmos has mentored hundreds of innovators in Uganda and throughout the world. Notably, he has served as a mentor and judge for the Big Ideas Contest since 2014, a mentor for the founders of Innovex, the first Ugandan-owned company to set up a state-of-the-art electronics manufacturing facility, and he was also on the front line of the Science and Technology Innovations Challenge in Uganda, supported by the Presidential Initiative at Makere University which created a pool of innovators in high schools that are currently transforming the technology landscape in Uganda, and these include the founders of Innovex. Cosmas Mekirize, 35, is an electric engineer, come by medical engineer, who is a lecturer in the Department of Electric and Computer Engineering at Makere University. He possesses 11 years of teaching, research, and innovation experience at Makere, MIT, Rutgers, and Phillips. His work focuses on medical imaging, medical instrumentation, artificial intelligence, and sustainable energy systems. From his research over the years, Cosmos has registered five patents. This is the first with the United States Patents Office. Here is the second with the World Intellectual Property Organization. 
He is the third from his work at Philips, again with the World Intellectual Property Organization. This is the fourth, again with the United States Patents Office. And this is the last, which has recently been filed with uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. His major product realizations are in supporting intervention and guidance on Philips ultrasound systems, as well as a device for decontamination of medical personal protective equipment towards safe reuse. Cosmos has mentored hundreds of innovators in Uganda and throughout the world. Notably, he has served as a mentor and judge for the Big Ideas Contest since 2014, a mentor for the founders of Innovex, the first Ugandan-owned company to set up a state-of-the-art electronics manufacturing facility, and he was also on the front line of the Science and Technology Innovations Challenge in Uganda, supported by the Presidential Initiative at Makere University, which created a pool of innovators in high schools that are currently transforming the technology landscape in Uganda, and these include the founders of Innovex. Cosmas Mikirize, 35, is an electric engineer come by medical engineer, who is a lecturer in the Department of Electric and Computer Engineering at Makere University. He possesses 11 years of teaching, research, and innovation experience at Makere, MIT, Rutgers, and Philips. His work focuses on medical imaging, medical instrumentation, artificial intelligence, and sustainable energy systems. From his research over the years, Cosmos has registered five patents. This is the first with the United States Patents Office. Here is the second with the World Intellectual Property Organization. He is the third from his work at Philips, again with the World Intellectual Property Organization. This is the fourth, again with the United States Patents Office. And this is the last, which has recently been filed with uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. His major product realizations are in supporting intervention and guidance on Philips ultrasound systems, as well as a device for decontamination of medical personal protective equipment towards safe reuse. Cosmos has mentored hundreds of innovators in Uganda and throughout the world. Notably, he has served as a mentor and judge for the Big Ideas Contest since 2014, a mentor for the founders of Innovex, the first Ugandan-owned company to set up a state-of-the-art electronics manufacturing facility, and he was also on the front line of the Science and Technology Innovations Challenge in Uganda, supported by the Presidential Initiative at Makere University, which created a pool of innovators in high schools that are currently transforming the technology landscape in Uganda, and these include the founders of Innovex. Cosmas Mikirize, 35, is an electric engineer come by medical engineer who is a lecturer in the Department of Electric and Computer Engineering at Makere University. He possesses 11 years of... Even when this is to us, they are still very, very important because they are part of the ecosystem. And in this week, we want to see the importance, the economic importance of these pathogens. And that's why we are saying, we are talking about a pathogen economy. And this is in line with, with the preparations for us to celebrate the International Science Day, which will be tomorrow. But with me, we have distinguished scientists and economists who are going to, uh, to enlighten you and give you more information about this uh, pathogen economy. What is it? What can we explore from it? So with me, allow me to introduce the panelists this afternoon, our discussants this afternoon, and these are distinguished scientists in their own field, they, with diverse backgrounds, and we are using One Health. As they introduce themselves, you will actually see that One Health is here to work. So with me, and uh, there is also, we have a lot of gender balance uh, in this panel this afternoon. And I will, intro, I will start with my just neighbor here, uh, Dr. Shiba Jita. She's an epidemiologist, but I will allow her one minute to uh, one a few seconds to say more about her sort of before we go into the discussion. Shiba. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. 
an epidemiologist. I work with the Tropical Health and Education Trust as their country director, but I also serve as an honorary lecturer of epidemiology at Makere University School of Public Health. And I'm part of the preside team representing the epidemiologists. Yeah, Shiba, thank you so much. And you are most welcome. The viewers are excited and uh, looking forward to hear from you more. Let's uh, get here uh, briefly from our next neighbor, Professor Wako Paul. Please, uh, if you yes. uh, introduce a little bit more about yourself so that the viewers know whom they are speaking to. Thank you very much, moderator. I'm Professor Paul Wako. I'm a clinical pharmacologist by training specializing in drug discovery and development and i'm currently serving as vice chancellor of Stema university thank you so much professor paul uh, now next to uh, person is dr chiguri juliet please say a little bit more about yourself so that the viewers know whom they will be interacting with thank you uh, thank you chair i'm dr juliet chiguri and i work with makere university and i'm an anthropologist my major interest is social affairs and uh, community with behavior um, regard with behavior related issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliet. Uh, our next uh, panelist, Muhumza, please go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself, and then we we start this discussion. I uh, thank you, moderator, Dr. Fred Muhumza is my name. I'm here because uh, science makes economies move. So I'm an economist who is so much interested in science as the engine of that development, which blends and makes our lives happy. You wouldn't be seeing us if it wasn't for science and the economy. Thank you. Yes, our dear viewers, this afternoon, this is the, uh, the team of our panelists. And to make it, to put it into perspective, our dear viewers, COVID-19 is one of those diseases caused by a pathogen. I'm not going to mention the name of the pathogen because it is very long, but this pathogen is caused by one of those uh, microorganisms I was talking about, a virus that causes COVID-19. All of us, we know uh, what COVID-19 has done to us. But this afternoon, we are also going to look at some of those potentials that uh, come from these pathogens. And we want to position these pathogens to become our source of income, our source of transformation. Uh, if we look at Uganda alone, we have over 200 pathogens, all of them requiring drugs, vaccines, diagnostics, and so many other supplies. But most of these things today, we import them from other countries. Can't we uh, use our science and technology to have all these supplies from within Uganda? So with us this afternoon, we are having the distinguished scientists here, and one by one, they are going to share with us those opportunities that are available from different science value chains that we Ugandans, we can tap in, develop ourselves, but also save ourselves from these diseases. Remember, not only ourselves, but also our animals and also our environment. Now, allow me to invite Shiba Jita, who is an epidemiologist, to tell us from that perspective. What opportunities are in that field, uh, Dr. Shiba, that we can uh, tap in, or we are already tapping into, uh, in order to, to exploit more that area of epidemiologists in transforming our economy, but also saving lives. Thank you so much, Shiba. Over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so regarding from an epidemiological perspective, as you correctly mentioned, Uganda is endowed with so many pathogens. We are within the hot spot for most of the viruses that are emerging. Some are not yet known, so you can be guaranteed that there will be many outbreaks or epidemics emerging within Uganda because we lie within the hot zone. As epidemiologists, we study about disease-causing agents, their distribution, um, the determinants, the risk factors uh, of the people who are likely to fall ill uh, with disease from these agents, and are also able to identify, by identifying those risk factors, we are able to propose um, ways in which these diseases can be uh, can be treated 
or we can prevent the cause of these diseases. Um, so what COVID has done, it has demonstrated to us that um, they, it's very important for us to have locally generated information or evidence. Gone are the days when we had to wait for foreigners to come in and do studies and inform us on what we need to do. Because as you've all witnessed, the way COVID has played out in the different populations and countries varies from one place to another. Meaning there is a need to have local generated evidence to inform our preventive uh, interventions. So there is room for big data, especially. So, and there is room for us to link up with other industries like technology. Uh, given the discoveries now, we can no longer go to the field and be collecting data. The traditional way that we used to collect data with pen and paper. Now we can use our smartphones because the penetration of smartphones is quite high in Uganda and Africa generally and other technology that we can use. So that's one area. And then also it has given us an opportunity to start viewing these pathogens with a different lens. When we were studying, when you are looking at a pathogen or a disease, we used to wear the lens of what is the importance of this pathogen from a, a medicinal point of view, who is likely to fall sick, and what intervention can we take to prevent this disease. But today I want to encourage all the scientists out there and my fellow epidemiologists to, to include a third lens and that is the commercial lens. By looking at how many people are affected by this disease and if we are able to develop products that are able to prevent uh, the spread of this disease, uh, there would be commercial value. So that we stop only looking at pathogens as uh, gloom and doom, but also view them as uh, there is an opportunity for us to commercialize and not only make a contribution to our economy, but also to better ourselves as scientists. Thank you, moderator. Yes, thank you so much, Shiba, for those insights. We continue to learn and encourage you, our dear viewers, that it is not only the members you are seeing here on the panel, but even you, you can make it, you can manage it. Before COVID-19 came, we used to import all the face masks. But as I talk of today, some face masks are being done from here. That's one of the ways. And I also want to remind you that we cannot eliminate these pathogens. They are here with us. So the better we plan and develop our technology, much the better. So Shiba, is there any advances we have gone into this area where we have developed some, the, some innovations for disease surveillance that we can now deploy without depending on the foreign surveillance systems so that it is developed by our own, it is patented and it can be as a source of income for our science. Shiba. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think we have some products that are in the pipeline. Uh, however, I think I would not want to be so preemptive to bring up uh, these issues at the front because as you know with issues of patenting that you've raised, it's important to disclose information at the right time. So what I can say for now, there are products that are under uh, being produced, but one that is already out that was produced by a team from uh, Makere University, the RAN team, is the epitent and this uh, came at a backdrop of uh, the Ebola epidemic that we had that ravaged uh, West Africa and the rest of the world. It threatened to become a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Shiba. Epitent is a mobile hospital temporary structure that can be moved to any part of the country and provide a shelter for where people can access medical services. That and that's innovation from here, Uganda. So, so, Shiba, thank you so much. Now, all these diseases, they require interventions. And interventions can be in form of vaccines, can be in form of drugs and others. Uh, Professor Wako, 
Could you enlighten us, the viewers, want to know what we Ugandans are saying we are doing in order to come up with our own uh, drugs, our own diagnostics, our own treatments? Professor Wako, please give us some kind of insight. Yeah. Who can do it? Uh, Over to you. Thank you very much, moderator. I think that uh, previously, whenever a disease broke, broke out, the thinking was more of uh, how do we solve it and we didn't pay a lot of attention to the opportunities coming with this disease. And this is how this concept of pathogen economy is coming on board. History has it that we had HIV around and we were waiting for therapeutics, medicines from other countries. And indeed, in the scientific community, we were extremely worried that should this epidemic affect some of the countries that give us the medicines, then we could, be able, we could not be able to manage the HIV pandemic. Fortunately, the pandemic didn't go that far. It, it was contained. Uh, COVID-19, I, I think, has accelerated this thinking. Because this time, the countries where we've been running to are the countries where the epidemic started. Yes, Professor Waku, currently Uganda is using about 1.7 billion per year in importing pharmaceuticals. Absolutely. What do you think that money can do for us as local scientists in order to come up with so our own I innovation? Definitely, we would do a lot if we, we were able to substitute, uh, do import substitution and make our medicine is here, our vaccine is here. We could be able to go a long way in solving this problem and that money could be used to improve the livelihood of people in Uganda. So generally the pathogen economy is bringing in the concept of looking at diseases as a source of livelihood. How can we improve our livelihood? And indeed Uganda has responded tremendously especially in the past two years. Uh, we've been able to start a number of initiatives. We have teams that are working to develop vaccines we have teams which are working on therapeutics and we have teams which are working on making diagnostics here in the country. Uh, of course, one would say yes, they are making them. How about if COVID-19 uh, ends? But the key issue is that capacity is being built and in the future, we should be able to respond much faster. Yeah, thank you so much, Professor. Probably the viewers may be wondering there, they say, how do we uh, explore this area? How can we get involved? How can we participate? We are, I'm here, I'm coming from Kamwenji. What can I contribute to this field of uh, developing pharmaceuticals and other needs to, uh, from the pathogens? How can the rest of the public and the society participate? I, I think our country has been building a lot of capacity over time. Mm. Uh, in universities, we have extremely highly qualified academic staff mm. who have actually been able to, to take up this responsibility heavily, and now we are really moving forward. Uh, we have a lot of infrastructure in various institutions. I think one of the challenges we've been having is that our infrastructure is distributed in various institutions without coordination. And that's how I, wa I would like to thank the team which was put up under preside that they've been able to establish networks that could help in putting together this infrastructure to be used for a common, a common cause. Wow, thank you so much, Professor. We'll be coming back to you. Now let me turn to one of our other panelists, uh, Juliet. Uh, Juliet, when I was still very young and growing up as a young man, uh, my mother used to make a concoction of different uh, things and uh, I would get well. And uh, when I started the understanding, I got to learn that that's what is called indigenous technical knowledge. Where is this indigenous knowledge in this era of science and technology? You as a social scientist, where can we tap into that field in order to enhance our science and technology? Over to you, Julie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mm. It's a privilege and an honor to talk about the pathogen economy, but at the same time to emphasize the fact that we have indigenous knowledge and our society from far history indicates that we do have a rich economy. We have different types of herbs, we have different types of trees, 
we do have different types of shrubs everywhere. And uh, our great grandfathers, great grandmothers used to use these in terms whenever we would have diseases like malaria, uh, any type of fever, um, diarrhea in the society. So when, when those diseases would come about, um, they would be treated with using herbs. So it's, this is what we call indigenous knowledge. So science today has made indigenous knowledge visible. And that's one of the reasons we are here today, that our science are trying to show innovations. We've seen bananas and people are making um, hand sanitizer from the bananas. And we know that we have to wash our hands. And uh, for anybody to survive, in 1918 when there was the Spanish flu which affected the world, um, we realized that hygiene was very important, cough etiquette. Uh, was very important. So hygiene was the best issue and that's how the word bless you if you survive came about. Okay, so, now so Juliet you are telling us that all of us we can be scientists. Uh, from our background wherever we are, all of us we can enhance that uh, indigenous knowledge, transform it into innovations and then make money for, for ourselves and also for our economy. But you brought out something very 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 important that Uganda is very rich in biodiversity. We have all these different herbs, we have different environments and trees, all of them important for, for serving our lives. And all of us, it is our responsibility to preserve, protect this uh, mother nature as we get services from this nature. From my classes, I would be talking about ecosystem services and so on. But for the purpose of this discussion, the environment where we live, Everything that we partake from this environment helps us and it is our duty and our responsibility to preserve and protect while exploiting for economic transformation. And now that takes me to our, uh, one of our important panelists here this afternoon who is an economist. And in Uganda we are now about uh, 43 million people. Uh, that's a very, very good number for us to, to drive this economy. We are still growing and expanding. So from economic perspective, what can we do with this pathogen economy, with this growing population, with the rich biodiversity we have in this country? What potentials, what, how economics come in, how can we exploit these pathogens? Thank you so much. Over to you, Fred. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon once again, our mm -hmm. viewers and listeners out there. The economy is everything. The moderator mm. was shying away from the word the ecosystem. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is. We are here, COVID is with us and it's not going away. It is part of our ecosystem now. Mm. But maybe because we just discovered it, the pathogens, as he said, there are so many around us. Mm. We might discover more as we go along. Now, some are good for us as 43 million people. They have left us to grow. Mm. But as we grow, we begin to squeeze them in their ecosystems as well. Mm. You cut down the trees, you begin to eat animals you are not eating. Mm. Now, and before you know it, you have entered the pathogen space. Mm. So that growth of the economy is both good mm. and can be bad. Mm. And that's why I'm glad I'm sitting with the scientists who help us to understand those dynamics mm. and see how do we exist. But we are saying, how do we make money out of all this? Mm. How do you make a living? Because you mm. must live with these pathogens and mm. also make money. Mm. We were looking at the statistics for the East African community alone, the five countries really. A few years back, we are importing goods, pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. worth $1.74 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, and we only make about 10% of that. Mm -hmm. If we are tapping our indigenous ones, who knows, we'll be saving, mm -hmm. but we'll also be making money. COVIDx mm -hmm. is out there. Mm -hmm. It's a homegrown. Does it work? Does it not work? Mm -hmm. That's already science trying to venture mm -hmm. into the economic space. Mm -hmm. But you begin to notice that nobody will allow you in this space for free. Mm -hmm. You have to satisfy your drug. Mm -hmm. These are human lives. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we go over all of those? Now, each of these mm. descriptions I'm making, mm. there is an opportunity to make money, mm. to offer the patents, mm. to develop the science, mm. to see an opportunity, to sell it, to preserve people. Mm. So you can make money by mm. research. Mm. Some of these people are talking about mm. are researchers, mm. they earn money. Mm. Out of research, mm. they generate knowledge which you can sell mm. after patenting it. But mm. that knowledge can also be transformed into mm. goods and services. Mm. We are here surviving on mm. the integration of that science mm. into the economy. Mm. We are all now on WhatsApp and what? Mm. What is happening there? It is mm. science. Mm. From a physics lab, mm. 
blended by a business person mm. who served it to us as a product mm. and they are making money so that's mm. how the economy mm. survives in this ecosystem mm. and it should be a welcome thing that covid mm. came and woke us up mm. we are now studying online mm. we are having meetings online mm. It's cheap to us, but it's making somebody money. Mm. I wish that somebody was me. Mm. I make money out of your mm. people's livelihoods. Y yes, Fred, when we talk in terms of economics, we start talking about uh, suppliers and consumers. Uh, when you look at our economy, I think we are mostly consumers on yeah. most of the things. So we need to turn around yes. and be able to be the, the suppliers also to be able to stand here to, to tap into the, the global economy. And uh, most of our viewers will say, but if I start making this, where will I sell it? Maybe our viewers need to know, is there a market for some of these products if we can uh, innovate and make? If you look at East African community, if you look at Africa population, then look at the global population. Many viewers need to appreciate and understand that actually there could be, there is a market or there could be a market. Maybe you could give more light in that perspective. It's good to speak about the market because mm. quite often in economics we say mm. the customer is the king. Yes. Begin with the market. Mm. Now many of us have had hardships mm. because you say this is my product. No, it can't mm. be your product. You are not mm. the one to consume it. Mm. It's their product. Mm. So if you look out there, what do people want? Mm. And how do you design this for them? People mm. fall sick. Mm. So they certainly, when they fall sick, they need treatment. Mm. They will need people who are trained to treat them. Mm. But they also need knowledge to avoid falling sick in the first place. <laughs> yes. Now, all those are markets out mm. there. Mm. That every time I see so many people sick, mm. it's because nobody has taken advantage to study mm. what are their needs. Mm. You talked about masks. Mm. This is knowledge from science. Mm. Science says this pathogen moves through people being close to each other. Mm. So social distance. Mm. But then we realize we are social beings. We cannot <laughs> social distance. Yeah. We must come closer to each other. Mm. Then science came and said, fine, if you must come to closer, to, you put on a mask. Mm. By the way, it can only move from surfaces mm. to your mouth and mm. possibly through your hands. Sanitize. Mm. Mm. Now you as a person out there, you should be watching and say, what are the needs they are talking mm. about? Mm. How do I position myself mm. to be the one to give the sanitizer, mm. to be the one to sell the mask? Mm. And we are really happy in mm. a sense mm. that COVID created new opportunities for people to make money. Mm. Selling of masks became an essential service. Mm. That could bring you to town. Mm. That could make you some money. Mm. While you've lost your job elsewhere, mm. selling of masks is available, selling mm. of sanitizer was available. Mm. So those became opportunities. Mm. But who is making the sanitizer? Mm. The alcohol people mm. converted quickly into sanitizer. Mm. That's why I'm saying the market is always around. Mm. But are you observant enough mm. to tap the science, mm. make it a product, mm. to meet the needs of the people? We pay for a need. Mm. So if you don't see my need, you may not see me as a market. Mm. And yet there I am, I'm a market mm. fully fledged for you. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much, Fred. I will be coming back uh, to you again. But uh, now I want to turn again to Professor Paul Waku. Uh, we know that most of the pharmaceutical products we see on the market, at, uh, in one way or another, they have uh, a, a, a plant base. Or a pl uh, uh, the origin is uh, the one of the chemical properties uh, or ingredients uh, uh, is plant based. And we, uh, I've already said Uganda is very rich in biodiversity. Everywhere you go, we have uh, in abundance all these different plants. And in, in COVID, we have seen that actually local remedies or oh, herbal remedy, uh, remedies have played a very key role. So Professor Wako from the uh, pharmaceutical perspective, what, do, wh what message do we need to uh, tell our dear viewers in terms of exploiting this very good niche of our, of, of our, of our mother nature that it has provided us with a diverse of different plants, all of them with uh, chemical and uh, biochemical properties that are important for the pharmaceutical industry. And what innovations are going on right now in that perspective? Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, thank you very much, moderator. Yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, plants actually pioneered medicine. Mm. The, the history is very clear on mm. that. Mm. And indeed, it will continue to be a source of many products mm. in, in, for treatment of disease. Mm. And uh, of what is most important is that uh, these plants need to be assessed mm. because the global market needs really mm. products with proof of efficacy and safety. Mm. Uh, in the medical world, we cannot try out anything. 
And what is coming out of recent is that uh, a number of initiatives have started mm. to test these plants. Previously, there has been a lot of screening of plants in vitro. Mm. That, that's checking whether plants work, mm. but in vitro systems. Mm. But during the COVID-19 situation, mm -hmm. we were able to move our front. Yeah, and yeah, I'm really grateful to the support we got. Mm -hmm. Because for a long time, we've been wanting to carry out clinical trials mm -hmm. on some of our natural products mm -hmm. for them to be competitive. Mm -hmm. For a product to be able to hit the market, mm -hmm. one, you must carry out some studies. Mm -hmm. First, in a vitro, mm -hmm. that's the test tube. Next, you have to cut out some mm. tests in mm. experimental animals, mm. like mice, rabbits, mm. Mm. and then you have to cut out some clinical trials. Oh, our dear viewers, what I'm learning evidence. from Professor Wako is that science is a process. So, you science, go through different stages. Yes. Science is a process. Mm. It takes time. Mm. It needs investment. Mm. And therefore, we should be prepared to move this journey as a country mm. if we are to benefit from these natural products. Yeah, thank you so much, Professor. And having said that, I know uh, Dr. Shiba talked about surveillance. And when we talk about surveillance, our dear viewers, maybe you think it is only done when it is uh, part of the diseases. But as I've said, we have a big diversity of uh, different resources. Is surveillance can be can it be applied to all others other areas, including plant uh, documentation and profiling of different medicinal plants? What 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 is available in that field? What can we do? Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, you've raised a very critical issue. The science that we do as epidemiologists or as researchers is not limited to just the human being. Mm. Because for disease to happen, we have, you must have a disease-causing agent, which we call a pathogen. Then you must have uh, the host, which is the human being in this case, or the animal, your domestic animals that you keep, your cows, your goats. They can also fall sick, and we don't want them to fall sick. But most importantly, you have the environment within which the host and the pathogen leave. So for disease to happen, there is an interplay of those three. So when we are undertaking surveillance, we, sur we do surveillance of those three, if we are to be effective. Mm. And the opportunity is there. Mm. Because as you've said, as part of the process of doing surveillance in the environment, we have this rich biodiversity of plants and animals. Some are beneficial, mm. but how do we know they are beneficial? It's only when we study them. Mm. But the beauty with Africa mm. or Uganda, if I come home, uh, we have indigenous knowledge, as mm. Dr. Juliet mm. said. Our forefathers have been treating these diseases. Mm. So what we can do as scientists, mm. as epidemiologists, mm. and um, mm. is to help mm. uh, decolonize science mm by working with our indigenous communities mm. and helping them mm. document mm. what it is that they are doing, mm. but most importantly, also subjecting mm. that mm. to science. Yeah. Let's do rigorous tests, as Professor Wako has said, so that we see if these drugs, if these plants actually have uh, medicinal properties, how efficacious are they? How well do they work? and on what sort of organisms mm. do they work. Mm. And then we can profile mm. them mm. and have what we call mm. candidate drugs, mm. candidate vaccines. Mm. I think uh, that's mm. where the US and mm. the Western world has made money yes. off COVID. Mm. Africa, we've been sitting back. <laughs> Thank you so much, Juliet. Yeah. Uh, Shiba, rather. Uh, our dear viewers, I don't want to take you so much into uh, deep science, but I, I want to let you know that we fall sick from these uh, microorganisms or pathogens, but also plants fall sick. They get diseases also. They get affected by several different uh, microorganisms, and they are, once they get sick, those plants get sick, it affects our food security. Our animals we live with, they are a source of food, but they also fall sick. They get these diseases. So when we are talking about exploiting the, the pathogen, we are looking at all uh, everything, even the environment themselves. So 
the, we let's think out of the box, look at very, a very diverse area and be able to exploit what can I do to my plant. My plant is falling sick. What do I need to do? Can I invent? Can I come up with a, a, a drug then go through the science and be able to treat the plant? If the animals are falling sick, we are still importing a lot of drugs to treat these animals. But we want to work as sciences, as scientists, or with everybody to come out with the potential remedies. These potential remedies will be turned into money. Once we make the products, we are able to use, but we are able to export or sell to other markets. So really that is uh, why we are emphasizing and talking about science. Probably, Juliet, you can give us more from the social economic perspective. What, does, what do we need to know so that we can prepare this science? What has made us lag behind? What can we do to reactivate our minds to think innovatively? Over to you, Juliet. Thank you, Mr. Mm. Moderator. Yes. I think that's a very good question yes. uh, to me and to the public. Yes. Uh, because we are looking for behavioral interventions. Mm. We are looking for um, how to solve our problems. Mm. When there are social innovations, that means there are problems in society. And we as Africans, we as Ugandans, we as the community, we at the family level, we at the individual level, to talk about the sociological circle, we need to come up with ideas which can solve our own problems. So if, if we are living with our animals, we are living with the chicken, we are living with the cattle in our homes, they sometimes transmit diseases to us and we transmit diseases to them. So we need a uh, One Health approach, mm. which is a multidisciplinary approach, mm. which is multi-sectoral approach, mm. uh, in order to do away with mm. those diseases. Mm. But at the same time, as we do our innovations, mm. we base those on the indigenous knowledge. Mm. What do we know? What did our forefathers do? Mm. What, what can we do today mm. to solve those uh, particular mm. problems? So in that way, we encourage our manufacturers mm. to put science mm. into, uh, mm. into a sellable mm. um, object. We want to mm. make sure that the innovations done mm. as scientists mm. uh, can be sold on our local market mm. and people earn an income as well mm. from that. Mm. And then we can encourage our local communities mm. uh, to have these innovations mm. to solve the home-based problems mm. because we are the ones who know mm. our problems. Mm. So at the end of the day, diseases can be approached because you know the mm. science the symptoms, mm. just you as an individual, mm. just you as a member of the community, mm. and then we put that into mm. the science perspective. Wow, thank you so much. I, uh, I, I still want to follow up with what you have just said, because we know science has a, a, a basis or a background, and our future scientists probably are not yet born, others have, have just been born. What do we need to do to inculcate the spirit of science I have seen some, uh, some of my children and others, when you say mathematics or biology, they start shying away. And we know it is the, uh, those are some of the ingredients needed for, to build the science we desire. What do we need to do? Or what is going wrong with our, the perceptions of young generations that science is hard? We just need to dismantle that as perspective. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, mm. again. I think it's very important for the young minds uh, to be capacitated, to, mm. be, to, to encourage them to do innovation. Mm. It's very important to put their perspective into looking back at what mm. used to happen mm. in order to solve the current problems. Mm. The pathogens are here with us. Mm. We've had jiggers. Mm. We are now having uh, COVID-19. Mm. How do we solve that? Mm. Uh, we need a homegrown solution mm. uh, to this kind of problems. Mm. But we need to encourage the young people. Mm. We need to um, build research. Mm. We need to do trials. Mm. We need the communities to mm. accept us to carry out those clinical trials. Mm. We need to encourage our government mm. to fund mm. um, our science mm. so that uh, we can be able to export any mm. products, any mm. drugs which are home grown. Mm. So it's the young people we need to encourage and focus on. And then the older people to support mm. and uh, share the knowledge which mm. they have 
with the young mind. Juliet, in summary, where you are saying we need to all be connected. Yes. And we can be connected at different level. At science level, at government level, at technical level, at technical level, at international level, and so on. And from the global economics and perspectives, uh, Mr. Muhumuza, you just need to encourage us and encourage the viewers and say that this thing is possible. We can be connected, we can use the resources available, but we start, start small, but also with a purpose and with a focus. Uh, Muhumuza, what do you want to say about that? How can we be reorganized? in order to promote science from different levels, whether it is at local government, at a community level, at a higher institution level, at primary level, we need that kind of connectivity. Science needs to be part of our blood. That's basically what I'm trying to say. But from economics, tell us how that can be done and how possible is it from your perspective. Yeah, thank you, moderator. I think mm. it's quite... Uh, an interesting observation when you talk mm -hmm. about connectivity. Mm -hmm. We began, we are, we are all living in an ecosystem. <laughs> yes. I think the scientists have literally mm -hmm. displayed mm -hmm. the connection between the plants, the mm -hmm. animals, and ourselves. Mm -hmm. Diseases move either way. So in a sense, we are already connected to mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Now, economics would come in to say, why is it important to make these mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. viable? Mm. useful mm. and therefore beneficial mm. to give us a reason why we should pursue them. Mm. Right even across the ages, mm. I'm looking at some of the displays behind us here mm. and there's one interesting one of mindset. The young mm. people mm. need to be learning and admiring these big scientists. Mm. So you must invest in these big scientists to discover the science, but also for the young people to look up and be connected in their minds. To say, I want to be like Dr. Shiba there. I want to be like professor when I grow up. I want to be the next generation that discovers the vaccine for I don't know which pathogen will come mm. in 2050. Mm. So they begin to connect upwards mm. in terms of knowledge, mm. but they also begin to connect to the classroom work. Mm. And so our teachers must make sure the teaching mm. encourages these people to connect to the future that they are aspiring to. Mm. And this the economics is to bring out the benefit, but also mm. to make these connections efficient. Mm. We talked about surveillance. Mm. And we all know how we were really running after the very first COVID cases. Who was with who? Chasing them, Land Rovers going this side, ambulances going there. Away. Now, the other young people said, why are you bothering? Yes. We are already connected by the web. Yes. Let's do apps. Yes. Yes. Then the app will tell you whose mm. phone was next to who. Mm. The Koreans were the first there. Mm. So we are already connected, mm. but the science is helping us to make mm. that process efficient, mm. that process more beneficial, mm. that me who is helping you to connect to each other, making mm. money, mm. but also I'm offering you a service by mm. you being connected to your people. Mm. I was here and I'm having people somewhere installing uh, data mm. and the internet. Mm. They said we need money now. Out of connection on your phone, you are able to pay. Yes. So these things make economic sense mm. to the person providing the service, mm. but also make it efficient for you to do so many things mm. at the same time. Mm. So the interconnectedness, mm. economics is saying it mm. is possible to make money out of it, mm. but also to use those connections to make mm. more money for more people mm. and make life better. I want to believe now we are doing surveillance very easily. <laughs> You saw the chaos that was at our airport until we said, but you people have your phones, mm. we have your emails. Mm. Just leave a sample and go. We shall find you if we need you. I, I like that, Mumza. Mumza, you are saying technology is very good. Important. But we need to be players. We need to be part of the technology because right now we are mainly consumers. We are here talking about these mobile apps. We are here, we are in front of very, very sophisticated cameras. But what is our contribution? Not even the battery, <laughs> the battery in that Not camera. Not even is the ours. battery in that camera. <laughs> so we need a holistic uh, sure. approach. We need an open mindset system that we can. And indeed, we can if we encourage ourselves. And if we learn, if we learn from our elders, but also learn from other developed technologies. Yes. But the, pro the most important thing is to adopt and, and, adapt. and adapt and then implement. I think, Juliet, you can talk to us through that process of adapting uh, and uh, then uh, use the system to develop your own system. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yes. Moderator. Again. Mm. Uh, I think that's um, very interesting because mm. as we sit here, mm. there's what we call interconnectedness. Yes. And the world is global. Mm. So there's globalization here. Mm. 
we all, dif uh, we all mm. in our different capacities as mm. scientists, represent different parts of the economy. Mm. Mm. So when we, 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 we develop a product, mm. like the anti-tick vaccine, mm. Uh, it's going to be used uh, mm. on the cattle mm. and then the, we are going to be the consumers as human beings. Mm. At the same time, mm. the ticks as, um, mm. as the ones which are biting our cattle, they are also being prevented. Mm. But then we are the ones developing a homegrown solution mm. so that our beef and mm. meat is healthy and we are also healthy, mm. the people who eat it. So one health, mm. one approach, mm. one people. Wow, thank you so much. I like that concept. Manufacturing is, a, is, a, 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 is indeed a very long process. And at every level, there is an opportunity. For example, you talked about anti-thick vaccine. But that vaccine eventually will be packed in a vial. Whether it is a metallic vial, whether it is a plastic vial, it will even have a rubber top <laughs> sometimes. Even on top of rubber top, there is another metal seal. All those are different sources of manufacturing and which can be taken up by different industries at different levels. So as we talk of a pathogen, it is so connected, so many other enterprises, that we don't, we don't only say that somebody is making a vaccine. You say, if a vaccine is being produced, what am I contributing to that vaccine to be on the market? Am I contributing on the, on the rubber uh, top or the, 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 the viral where the, uh, the vaccine is being packaged? So that's the kind of uh, mindset we like to create through this science week. But this is just the beginning. And Professor Wako can uh, really tell us what the universities are doing and what uh, secondary schools, what primary schools, what kindergarten schools uh, need to do in order to enhance science. Over to you, Prof. Yes, thank yes. you very much. Mm. Uh, universities have really done a lot. Mm. Uh, of course, the story started with building capacity mm. to be able to, to move over to products. Mm. Uh, there is a lot of research going around in the mm. universities mm. in various aspects. Mm. There is research going on around mm. uh, in, at the preclinical stage. There is a lot of research going on in the, o almost all sectors. Mm. Universities really mm. uh, are doing quite a wonderful mm. job. Mm. And uh, I think at the lower levels, mm. The, I, uh, that's where the orientation to science should really think. Mm. Because if we are to move forward, I, I think science should be made easy. Mm. Uh, I heard somebody saying everybody thinks science is extremely hard. Mm. Uh, that's true. Mm. And uh, I think the curriculum reforms, the curricular reforms going on, should help to make science a bit more, mm. more easy. We, we have to make science easy for these younger people so that they are able How do you think we can make science easy? We need to have prototypes on the ground. We have to have hands-on, vocational uh, training. Absolutely. Yes, uh, yes. At a primary level, mm. all these concepts which mm. you are seeing, the Kira mm. EV bus, should, mm. should be feasible from the mm. primary actually. Mm. Mm. You know, and the children are quite exciting. They make these models, but, mm. but we don't support them. <laughs> yes. uh, and when they go to school, they are supposed to throw away the model they've made and, and go for theory. theory. Uh, and that's where the problem is. Mm. Uh, the moment we make learning very practical, mm. oriented, well, uh, mm. skill-oriented mm. across the board, mm. then we should be able to Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, we, let's go back to our, our pathogen economy again, once again. Once we get these pathogens within us, within our environment, within our uh, uh, animals, it requires management. It requires uh, what we call as a part, of, a part of it is surveillance, but trying to establish the cause. Then when you get the cause and you know the disease is there, you need to manage it. Once you, we manage it, most of the time we want to focus on eradicating it or <laughs> so that we don't want it. So from uh, Dr. Shiba, those are different levels. We can call them also value chain along the way. And at each of those stages, there is an opportunity for science and technology and innovation. Because you gave a very, very good example of an epitent, 
an epitent came up to decongest the health facilities. What opportunities are there? We have health facilities. They may not be enough. There are other possible, possible solutions like epitent and others. Well, speak, us, speak to us through that. Uh, the opportunities available. What scientists can tap in or what they should look at in order to, to explore science in that field. And then, of course, once the product comes up, it is part of the pathogen economy. Okay. Thank you, moderator. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very critical question. So going back to science, you keep saying the scientists. Mm -hmm. I think today I want to emphasize that we are all scientists. Mm -hmm. All of us are born scientists. Mm -hmm. Because as children, you're always asking questions. So there is what we call the scientific inquiry. Mm -hmm. So what we can do as the researchers within these research institutions, uh, not just the scientists, because mm. all departments mm. do research, mm. so mm. let's take this information out, what we know, but present it in such a way that everybody in society understands what mm. we are putting across. Mm. I'll use the example of COVID, which mm. is what is most current mm. now. Mm. This time what we did right as researchers was to state what it is we are dealing with. Mm. That we are dealing with a virus. Mm. That is not important. I don't need to know what a virus is. But we are able to say this virus is spread through mm. breath. Mm. When I breathe out those mm. droplets. Mm. So to solve it you need a barrier. Mm. It's spread by contact when mm. I touch this contaminated mm. surface, touch mm. my mouth, my nose, mm. my eyes. Mm. So we need to wash our hands or mm. we need to keep our hands clean. Mm. Now that can be translated into mm. any language mm. without necessarily talking mm. about the name mm. of the agent causing mm. the, the, yes. the disease. Mm. And then what society has done mm. is quickly mm. utilize this information. Mm. So I'm going to use that mm. to show yeah, the value yes. chain. Mm. So those who were producing alcohol, mm. the bars had been closed, mm. so consumption had gone down. Mm. But they still had their alcohol, alcohol with them. Yes. And back in primary, we were taught mm. that alcohol can kill germs. It's a disinfectant at a certain level. Mm. So they quickly applied that knowledge mm. and turned their booze mm. into mm. disinfectants. Mm. But why were they able to do that? Mm. Because scientists, mm. researchers told them mm. that we need mm. something to kill the germs. Mm. And mm. there was a market, mm. as Dr. Muhumza was saying. Mm. Everybody was at risk. Mm. So it made business sense mm. at that point mm. to venture into mm. disinfectants. Mm. That would never have happened mm. if scientists had not provided mm. that information mm. in a language mm. that they mm. understand. Mm. So my appeal is that mm. we stop talking to ourselves as scientists. Mm. We are very good at doing mm. research mm. and publishing it mm. in our journals, mm. which mm. only we mm. scientists mm. read. Mm. But if we are to commercialize mm. this mm. pathogen economy, mm. we are going to have to put out mm. information mm. to the different sectors. Mm. And even these children at mm. a young level, as mm. Professor was saying in mm. primary, we need to be appealing to mm. them mm. by sharing this information mm. in a language mm. and at um, using terms they mm. can identify with. Mm. I think if we are able to do mm. that mm. as scientists, mm. then science is going to become mm. commonplace mm. as Mm. And it is, just mm. like mathematics, mm. many people say, I fear math, <laughs> I yes. fear math, mm. but everyone wants mm. to be rich. Mm. How are you going to be rich when you can't mm. count your money? Mm. We say people are illiterate, mm. but they are able to count mm. money. Mm. So I think it's a mindset mm. and our job mm. as the privileged mm. few who are mm. researchers and mm. scientists, mm. let's help mm. Uh, mm. by distilling mm this information mm. and putting it out there. Yeah, Shuba, you raise a very, very, very important uh, aspect. We need to translate. We need to ca customize this information to the society to the so that they can understand and appreciate. As we look for opportunities, of these pathogens or microorganisms in terms of vaccines, in terms of uh, drugs for, for treatment, in terms of diagnostics, 
there are so many other aspects, other value chains involved that need to be understood and appreciated and then we can exploit them, develop products like developing those products from alcohol that are sanitizing. So there is a lot, but they will, they, the people out there, they need to see connectivity. They, want to, they need to know that what they made or what they saw has contributed actually to the prevention of COVID-19 or to the even eradication of other previous diseases or poor control of other diseases. The message is these pathogens are still here with us. COVID is going to end, another pathogen is going to be there. So the opportunities are always there. Why are we struggling? Because we need to save lives. We need to save our lives. We need to save the lives of our animals. We know why we need to do it. We need to save our plants. We know how to, we need to, uh, to, why we need to do it. If we don't do it, we will perish. So let's tap into those different opportunities, those different areas to innovate and develop products at different levels. And that's why this team is here talking about the pathogen economy. We are here talking about science, but this is not a one off thing. It should be part of us, it should be part of our culture, it should be part of our life. And when I saw culture, of course, Juliet comes in very, very strongly. At the different cultural levels, there is a lot of knowledge, there is a lot of information that can be got from there. Even say, the names of these diseases, these communities give them names. I have not moved around, probably Juliet, you know. If there are some names, you know they have given COVID-19. We talk COVID-19, but out there, there could be already names being given to COVID-19. Probably Juliet talked to us through that perspective of cultural, uh, cultural perspective in relation to science and uh, how it can be uh, harnessed. Uh, thank mm. you, moderator, for, yes. that, uh, for mm. that encouragement to talk about how we perceive yes. as communities how mm. we look at diseases. Mm. Most of diseases, mm. these diseases have local names. Mm. COVID-19 has, <laughs> ca has come up with several names since it's uh, emergency uh, a year ago. Uh, people could refer to it as Corona, just like you've seen that there's an English word for benzene, and then also locally people call it uh, benzene. So they have different names, just like we've had HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS has had a local name, slim, meaning uh, it makes you very thin. So COVID-19 has also had those names, uh, particularly showing that we culturally contextualize mm. Mm. Uh, any disease which mm. we live with. Mm. And also the medicine, as you've seen the new scientists mm. coming up with COVID-19, mm. uh, it comes from the very fact that mm. it's corona. Mm. So it's um, referred mm. to locally. Mm. So it has emerged with mm. that name. Mm. So science is within us, mm. uh, just like Dr. Shiba, mm. uh, uh, Professor Wako mm. has show, indicated, and mm. uh, Dr. Mwumza. Mm. And you, Dr. Mgisha, mm. you know very well, mm. Professor Mgisha, mm. that uh, uh, diseases emerge from us human beings mm. and then also affect the mm. animals. And mm. also animals, mm. even plants, mm. have diseases mm. which we treat using our indi mm. indigenous mm. knowledge. Mm. So they also have mm. different um, mm local terms mm. in different languages. Mm. Um, corona may have risen as a mm. result of talking about mm. um, COVID-19. <laughs> COVID <laughs> <laughs> but then there are also other names, yes, uh, which yes, I may not yes, at the moment yes. quickly think about. Mm. Uh, but mm. there are several names which mm. have uh, come up mm. uh, to, to, to refer to the disease. Mm. And by that, mm. we also remember it. How do we differentiate mm. it mm. from the common flu? Mm and from the common cough mm. and uh, is the cure very mm. differently mm. developed mm. Uh, in terms of mm. uh, um, uh, corona as a mm. new emerging mm. disease mm. or cov uh, covid mm. or as or mm. senigo mukambwe oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the, all those names have come up to indicate that it's mm. not a common flu mm. but um mm. it's a very mm. intensive mm. um uh, it's a very bad uh, flu, mm. different from H1N1, mm. different from uh, mm. other uh, mm. pneumonia, different mm. from all these other mm. types of fevers and mm. coughs which come up mm. and affect us in uh, 
daily lives. So we we'll always remember Senigo Mkambwe, mm. very bad flu, mm. <laughs> Corona, <laughs> uh, uh, COVID-19. Yes. Thank, yeah, you. Th uh, thank you so much, Juliet, and thank you so much, our dear viewers and uh, listeners. We are almost coming toward the end of this session, but before we do, uh, Juliet has just uh, made me realize that actually COVID-19 has uh, shown us that the, the whole world is a global village. That these uh, organisms, or what we call pathogens, can be found anywhere and in any part of, uh, of the world, including here in Uganda. And at different level, we can develop uh, several different solutions. And those solutions, they are the ones we turn into innovations mm -hmm. and turn into money. So, as we come to the end of this session, I'm going to request my dear discussants and panelists to, for each of them to give uh, just a take-home message to our viewers from your own perspective based on this discussion we have just had. And I will start with uh, Mr. Mumza. Over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the conversation really has blended the science mm -hmm. into what you live with. Mm -hmm. You now can Google even local words. Mm. <laughs> Five years ago, you wouldn't find those local words. Yes. Now you'll find them there because mm. you're trying to make the science mm. speak to what people do. Mm. I discovered from the scientists that we didn't wash our faces mm. just for the sake of washing. Yet we mm. grew up knowing it's mm. cultural. You wake up, mm. wash, wash your face. face. Yes. But later on, we discovered there was trachoma in the 50s. Mm. And the flies that spread it would mm. stitch from those things that you have in the morning mm. in the corner of your mm. eye to fly to different people's mm. eyes. Mm. But once you have washed them out, mm. the flies won't be there. Mm. Cutting our hair, there was lice. <laughs> so you want to prevent yes. those things. But mm. now it is blended into mm. the cultural context. Mm. Now you have your smartphone. Mm. You really don't need to know things. Each mm. one of us, you're fearing about, but each one of us has a phone number. Well, great. Thank you so much, Muhumza. Over to you, Juliet, for the just the final words to our viewers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mm. I think what we need to take up is that the youth need to adapt to the future. They need to think through history. They need to know that these, these diseases have been there before and they are there in the future. And we need social innovations as Africans, as Ugandans, as uh, uh, from all parts of the world, how to solve mm. these problems. Mm. We've had the West Nile fever mm. affecting the mm. America. We've mm. had African swine fever mm. affecting um, other mm. Southeastern Asian countries. But it's also affecting us here in Uganda. And we are looking at mm. pork, mm. which we eat every day, and mm. we, we mm. utilize for our meals. Mm. But how can we get rid of it? Look at yourself. Behavior intervention is the answer. Look at the way you behave, and then look at the way you can control, and then come up with an wow, innovation. Wow, thank you so much. Behavior intervention. Professor Waku. Yes, thank yes. you very much. Mm. Uh, mm. As universities, the number of products under development mm. uh, on, in the side of therapeutics. Uh, you've heard of Covidex. There is the COVID lice from mm. Gulu. Mm. There is Tascov mm. in the city of being mm. assessed, mm. Uh, and many more from mm. various institutions. Mm. Uh, I think what we would like to appeal to Ugandan is, is mm. to trust us. Yes, we have now the capacity. Mm. We have our resources, mm. and we should develop them. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. To you, Dr. Shiba. Thank you, moderator. Mm. Just to re-emphasize that um, we, there is great need for homegrown solutions to the pathogens that we have here in Uganda. We are richly endowed. We are indeed the pearl of Africa, not only from the outside beauty, but also in terms of pathogens. And what COVID has shown us is that the homegrown solutions that we are going to come up with are not only going to solve our problems mm, mm. at an individual level, but they are going to make a contribution to our economy in Uganda and globally. Mm. And as preside, I think that's what we are working at, mm. trying to exploit this opportunity. Mm. So we appeal that you trust us, the scientists, as Professor mm. said, are busy working behind mm. the stage mm. and at the right time we shall be unveiling to you these different products mm. and we want you to be part of mm. us by providing us with the information we need mm. in terms of the problems mm. you're facing mm. 
but also give us mm. feedback mm. on what is working mm. and what you see is not working. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, our dear viewers, the, the most important message is that you, we, are, uh, we are partners, all of us, we need to work together in harnessing science, technology and innovation in order to transform our lives and also transform our economy. So we call upon you, our dear viewers, that uh, let us find different levels of engagement different levels of interaction, uh, different levels of promoting science and technology everywhere, even, in, uh, if, even within our homes. Let's allow our children to explore very early in life uh, different things that can uh, motivate their minds, uh, activate their minds uh, into developing things. And those are the things that will actually help them as they grow into coming up with uh, solutions with innovations, and we like to call you to be part of this system of Science Week. Every year it is going to be a Science Week. Uh, during this same time, we'll be commemorating uh, the, the International Science Day tomorrow. But it's, uh, for several years, we'll be celebrating. But we don't want just to come here at Kororo and talk. We want to come here at Kororo with products, with innovations, knowing that we are making money out of science, making money out of the pathogens. We are rich in pathogens, rich in biodiversity, and I can't thank you more than that. Thank you so much for being with us, our dear panelists and discussants. Thank you so much for, for providing all the information. I know you are available. You can be reached whenever you are needed. So we want to thank you so much. Our partners in broadcasting, thank you so much. We are adore you. Let's also utilize that uh, technology. Next time you will tell me you have a new camera that can, uh, <laughs> can capture things very well. Otherwise, thank you so much. I remain uh, Dr. Lawrence Mugisha. Uh, the moderator for this session uh, afternoon, uh, Passage and Economy, and uh, we'll be coming back with more programs. Thank you so much, and have a nice afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.